Satan can't get us one way, but one thing that he knows he can't pull us away, but he can have us attack our bodies. But I praise God, hallelujah, for the healing yes. of my body. Yes. And as I said, for the attacking my mind. Yes. You know, I've gone through a lot in these last seven months. Nine months. But oh, I yes. praise God, as I said, I have the victory. Amen. Sometimes Satan will tell us that we, we're not going to make it, we're going to die. But that scripture comes to mind, I shall not die. Live and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. But I'm facing the battle. Hallelujah. Not long ago, I met with a group of friends. As I listened to the conversation, it seemed like everyone in the room was facing some significant battle. Two of us had bad, had parents fighting cancer. One had a child with an eating disorder. Another friend was experiencing chronic pain, and another was facing surgery, major surgery. It seemed a lot for a bunch of people in their thirties and forties. First Chronicles 16 recounts a key moment in his, Israel's history when the Ark of the Covenant was brought into the city of David, Jerusalem. Samuel tells us it happened in a moment of peace between battles. When the ark was placed, with ark, when the ark was in place, symbolizing God's presence, David led the people in a song. Together, the nation sang of God's wonder, working power, His promise keeping way, ways, and His past protection. Look to the Lord and His strength. They cried out, "Seek His face always." They need to, because more battles are coming. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face. That's not bad advice to follow with illness. Family concerns and other battles confront us because we haven't been left to fight in our own wanting, wanting energy, waiting energies. God is present. God is strong. He's looked after us in the past and will do so again. Our God will get us through. Wonder working God, I hand over this battle to you. I trust in your strength and your promises. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. First Chronicles 16 and 11. And I am victorious. 
I am victorious and I praise God on today. For he is good and his mercy endure forever. Somebody told me yesterday, so I know you're going to stay at home tomorrow. And uh, you got enough Jesus to take you through. Yes, I have Jesus. But I tell you, I love being in the presence of the Lord. I love being in the presence of the Lord. And if any way for me to leave this world is in the presence of the Lord, that's the way I go. Hallelujah. Call me crazy. But I love him. And I thank him on today.
Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, God, for your goodness and for your mercy, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, we bless you, we honor your name, Jesus, we honor your name, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, Yes, God. 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 Hey, hey, see the man to Korea. Man to Korea, man to Korea. We sang the most. Hey, say, 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 say. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and say, Oh, God, the most. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Sometimes in your life, you got to learn how to shift the sound in your atmosphere. Amen. Yes, yes. Satan comes and he can only have victory when there is chaos. But there's something about noise that brings forth a shift in the sanctuary. That's why music has so much power. Because music can shift the sanctuary. The sanctuary can shift the atmosphere. It can set the atmosphere. Amen. So what we, what we must understand that whenever the enemy tries to attack you, and, and, then, and somebody said, you always talk about the devil. No, I'm always trying to expose the devil. Because somebody said, I'm always trying to expose the devil. Because if, if, if you got, if you think you're gonna walk around and, and you're not going to have any type of battle or any type of warfare, you are sadly mistaken. But when you understand that, that we will not be ignorant of Satan's devices, and we will always be aware of our constant victory. Hallelujah. Sometimes I will always be aware of our constant victory in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. I'm aware I got victory all around me. I'm aware that everything in my life got to line up with the word of God. I'm aware that everything surrounding me got to come in line when I first get my mind together. Oh, glory to God. Y'all better get that. When I get my mind together, everything else is going to line up. And I want you to understand, if you're working on getting your mind together, lay your hand on your head. Say, I'm working on getting my mind together. I'm working on getting my mind together. I'm working on getting my mind together. I'm in the listen. I ain't got there yet, but I'm working on it. You want to look around at somebody else and tell them I'm working on getting my mind together. The devil trying to make you feel crazy, but baby, you ain't crazy. You're just working on getting your mind together. Because what I understand, when I line my mind up, everything else is going to line up with the will of God. Because his word brings my mind into a mind. Yes, oh, yes. That was extra right there. But get your Bibles and go with me to Isaiah 56. We're going to continue talking about the tabernacle. God is in the midst of conditioning us. Thank you, Lord. 
on the next level. Amen, amen. And I rebuke this off our lives. I rebuke this off of our lives. Always reaching for something and never obtaining it. Oh, somebody better be yeah. careful. Y'all better get that right quick. Y'all be always reaching for something, but never obtaining it. Always going after the greater and never getting it. Hallelujah. Always says, I know it's better coming and better never get that. But I praise God right now. I need somebody to praise God for that spirit being broken off of your life. Always going after something you will never obtain. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, but, but, I, but I declare right now, y'all better get hope to this. You better get hope to this. Your victory in your next season is depending upon what you learn right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah, 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 let that sound before you say amen, but I'm going to say it again. Your victory in your next season is depending upon what you learn right now. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isaiah 56 and 7, read one verse. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted unto mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. That was Isaiah 56 and 7. Amen. Uh, as we look at the Word of God, and we look at Scripture, and we look at Bible. I've been given the, the assignment from God. Until you further notice, I've been given the assignment of God. That every time I get up to talk about prayer, because there's such a time for prayer. So some of you all may get tired of hearing about prayer. Preach to us, Bishop. You may get tired of hearing the message of prayer and the power thereof. But one of the mistakes we have made as the church, we have made the church something else besides the house of prayer. All right, Bishop. We have made the church a social club. Yes, yes. But the church is a house of prayer. We have made the church a place that we come and get our baskets of food and our when we can't pay our bills we go to the church and we get the church to help us out amen praise yes, god yes. thank you jesus but how many people have gotten the basket of food and, and gotten their bills paid but they did not learn the concept of prayer because prayer will position you that you will need somebody else to give you but you will be able to give somebody else yeah, yeah. that's what real prayer does yeah. so we have made the church something that is not the church the food of God supposed to be a house of prayer when we go back to our teaching and our understanding of the word of God and what we've been talking about the last two Sundays, we were talking about the tabernacle in the wilderness. We've been talking about um, how Moses had instructions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Ha! Moses had instructions on how to build the tabernacle, not just so they could have um, a place of beauty and a, and a place to be seen. But he told them to build the tabernacle, y'all better get this, in order to house the glory of God. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. In order to house the presence of God, they needed the tabernacle to house God's glory. Hey, the presence of God, it was manifested in that, in that midst, in the midst of his people. It was manifested, oh glory to God, by a cloud by day and fire by night. So the presence of God was always in that midst. They knew how to get to the glory of God. They would have to go to the tabernacle of God to get into his presence. One of the things that you never want to be is in the place where you no longer long for the presence of God. No longer do where you don't want to be there when the glory don't show up in your life. You don't want to be there when, when you don't feel his presence because in life that's going to come times you're not going to have money. But I cannot have money but I yet want his presence. I cannot have fame, but I get more his presence. Sometimes you ain't even gonna be there, but yet I want his presence on my life. I don't want to live without the presence of God. Amen. Not just this omnipresent. Yes, she gave away. Yes, he's over in Japan right now. And he's down there in South America too. But I declare that he's right here right now. Because he's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere. There's not a spot in the universe or the galaxy that God is not there. Because God is everywhere at the same time. Because he's God. But I've come today to let you know. There is a difference between oh, the omnipresence of God. The manifested presence of God. Because God is right there where you are in your mess. But in, but in the fullness of God, in the power of God, I want to experience the manifestation of God's glory in my life that's going to feed my very soul. Oh, oh, glory. Oh, so I need God to do something. In my life, I need, I need the presence of God. And I, and I don't just need it when everything is all right. But I need God in desperate times. Do I have anybody here that will be a witness to say that in my life, I need the presence of God. I need His glory to show up. I need it. I need it. Yes, I do. I need it. I need it with everything in me. I need it. With every, every, every day of my life, I need it. With every step I take, I need it. With every turn I make, I need it. Because there's going to come times when I don't know what to do. That's what I need, God. I need it. So what I got to understand is that when I get into his presence, to understand the value of his presence. Bishop, you better preach. Can I say it again? When I get into his presence, I must understand the value of his presence. Sometimes, sometimes I think this is the way we mess up. Sometimes we can come to church and you can feel God so much, you take it for granted. You think God is short because you look at keep. God ain't something about your keepness because he made you. And if you want to make one look just like you. He can turn around and make another one look just like you. He ain't said about your kingdom. So you got to understand in order to have this glory, we got to handle it like it's valuable. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Lord. We got to handle this glory yes, like it's valuable. We got to handle the presence of the Lord like it's valuable. Now, when I look, look, when, 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 when I look at the Bible, and I, and I, and, and, 
and our comparative to, 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 to the creation of the heavens and the earth. And I see that God created the heaven and earth. I see that he done it. He completed it. And barely used two chapters in the Bible All right. to do it. But when I look at the tabernacle, can I take my time today? When I look at the tabernacle in the wilderness, I had the labor of trying to find a foundational scripture. And I read and I looked, I turned pages, I searched. I couldn't find one scripture because there were so many verses that talked about it. All right, all right, all right. When God made you, when he made man, all he did, when he made the body of man, all he did is went and played in the dirt and breathed in it and man was man. When God made woman, all he did is told that same man to be breathing, told him to lay down and go to sleep, knocked him out. He went to sleep and reached inside of his body, pulled out a reel, and made woman. There you go. Know, yeah, the yeah, second yeah. edition, the woman. Amen. Yes. Thank you, God. But when God gave man instructions on how to handle his glory. Oh, God, better help me today. When God gave instruction on not only how to get his presence, but how to maintain his presence. See, see the presence of God has to be maintained. And he gave them instructions of how to handle the presence of God. Oh, glory to God. He gave them instructions of on how to handle the move of God. So in chapter after chapter, starting in Exodus, I think around about the 24th or the 25th chapter, on through the, 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 the 31st chapter, on in Leviticus, the priest got to do this and they got to do this and they got to have it. He gave instructions. He was into the detail. Now, I, we understand this. Jesus died, so we don't have to do all that. Y'all better stop right there and thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. You want to stop right there and thank God for the blood. He died so you don't have to do all that. You don't have to go through all the processes and procedures. He completed and fulfilled all of that. So all you got to do is accept the Lamb's burnt sacrifice. Ourselves and some 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 other little nuggets I'm going to drop today. With one instruction that they gave them in building the tabernacle, you must understand that the tabernacle, the difference between the tabernacle and a temple, a temple was permanent. Yes, the yes. tabernacle was temporal. They was built on the same structure, but the temple was permanent and the tabernacle was temporal. So the tabernacle had the ability to move from place to place. Amen. All right, all right. The tabernacle had the ability to move from place to place. The temple was permanent and the tabernacle was temporal. And so they, when, when God told them to move, they would have to take down the tents that it was and move the tabernacle and the, 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 the articles that was in there. And not only did God give them specific instructions on how to construct them, 
them. He also gave them specific instructions on how to move them. Oh, Lord, Lord. And so that's why most of us, we got to understand that when you moving in God, you got to move a certain way. Y'all better hear me today. Y'all better catch that. You got to move in a way that God wants you to move. See, what we do, we move in the flesh. And we move like we want to move. But since somebody that lift up your hands and said, the next move in my life, I'm going to move in the way God wants me to move. There was a certain way to move. One of the things they had to do is when they built the camp, they had to place the tabernacle in a certain place. It couldn't just be down the road. And the, the, the church is only on the road. Uh, uh, and we, we, we going over there and have church. So it had to be in a certain place. And, and, and when I tell y'all where it's at, you gonna already catch what God's trying to tell us right now. The tabernacle had to be in the center of the camp. Oh, did y'all get that? See, see, God ain't gonna work nowhere else. His presence ain't gonna operate nowhere else unless it's operating in the center of your life. Can I say that one more time? I got that for victory. Oh, the God ain't gonna work nowhere else unless he's in the center. Some of us, the best you in right now, you in it because God won't end up center. So there was three, three tribes, or twelve tribes in total. There was three on the east, and there was three on the west, and there was three in the north, and three in the south. Oh, glory to God. And oh, God. And, and so God has to be center. So that in moving in God, oh glory, you have to move according to God's instructions in order to be blessed. And you have to have Christ in the center of your life in order to be blessed. Now, 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 now. Now, now as you go into the temple, we would have to have because of Jesus, we don't have to have this, but if we were going to the temple, to the tabernacle, we would have to have a sacrifice. Uh -huh. Amen. One day, let's come, let's come out of the way, let's come where Jesus was. One day, Jesus went to the temple. And the same verse I just read in your hearing is the verse that he used to put those people in that place. He says, you have made my house a den of thieves. Yes, yes. We have mishandled the house of God. Amen. We have mishandled the house of God. We have mishandled the moving of God. And so therefore, what God says, because my people will not hear me yet, have to put them in a place where they have to go through what they got to go through in order for them to see what I got where I got to eat, what I have them to see. I want you to realize this. Whatever you're going through, the reason you're going through it is because God's trying to get you to see something that you won't see with nothing with your natural eyes on your own self. You will not submit to the presence of God and allow God to reveal. I wish I would shout right now with your hand. God, you have to go through what you got to go through so God to reveal to you what he wants to reveal. Yes, yes. Yeah. You, got, you got to deal with what you got to deal with so God's hand can be manifested in your life and he can show you what he wants to show you. So he, he, he told you have made my house a den of thieves, but then the house this should be the house of God for all people. The church should be a place of prayer if there's nothing else. All that other stuff I said earlier is fine, it's alright, it's good, we ought to have it, we should have it, thank God we don't get it, but I come today 
to tell you that our foundation is not prayer, we are not a church that God is coming for. Well, I, I, I need a better amen. Can I say it one more time? If our foundation is not prayer, we are not the church, God is You got to pray. Yes. You gotta pray. So, so let's go into the tabernacle. We got to have a sacrifice. You already got a sacrifice. Yes, yes. yes you Amen. Amen. So I say, hey guys, you, you have yes, a sacrifice. Yes, Jesus is your sacrifice. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. When you go to the tabernacle, the first thing you're going to come into contact is the gate. You're going to come in contact with the gate. It's the entry. The only entry to the tabernacle. There's only one entrance. There's only one entrance and one exit. There's no another exit to go through. There's only one way to go in and one way to go out. And Jesus is the only way in or out. There is only one way into prayer. And Jesus is the only way into prayer. He is the only way in and the only way out. Amen. Just like your trial, your trial, there's only one way in and there's only one way out. Jesus is the way in and Jesus is the way out. So if you're going to come out, you're going to have to come out through Jesus. One way in, one way out. Yes, God. Can I tell you this? Jesus died so you could pray. Y'all have heard that before. Yes. Jesus died so you could pray. So I could pray. Yes. So when I come before God, I gotta understand it was blood shed for this conversation. Y'all get that? Y'all, I, I don't think you got it. Can I say it again? When I come before God, it was blood shed for this. Conversation. That was blood on this conversation. This conversation has blood on it. It was shed for our sins that I may have a conversation with God. That was blood on this conversation. Blood on blood on blood on this conversation. We know God. Because the thing I must understand, I could not come before God with my raggedy self. Amen. Amen. Can you say it? Say, I'm raggedy. I'm raggedy. Say it a little more like I say, I'm raggedy. I'm raggedy. But say it now like I say, without Jesus. Without Jesus. I'm raggedy. I'm raggedy. I'm low down. I'm, low down. I'm, wrong. I'm wrong. I ain't worth, I ain't worth nothing. I don't have any value. I, don't have I shouldn't even be thinking about talking to God. But thanks be unto God. Because of salvation. I have the privilege of talking to a God of my salvation. Now thank God for your being ability to pray. Thank God, thank God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. 
I cannot pray without praise. So I got to come before God with my sacrifice with a praise. And see, you see, that, that's that, that's why I understand that I'm not praising God because I'm perfect, even though I'm saved, even though I have the sacrifice in my hand. I have Jesus, but there's still some stuff in me. I need God to work out of me. Now this prayer is not the prayer for the sinner. There is a prayer of repentance and a cry of repentance for the sinner. But this prayer we're talking about right now is for those that have already accepted the sacrifice of Jesus over their lives. Oh God. So when I come before God, I come before with praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise right now. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come before God with a praise. Yes, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Into his gates of thanksgiving. Into his courts. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's three levels of praise. The first level of praise is thanksgiving. I thank God for what He's already given me. Yes. So, 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 thanksgiving can only be based upon yesterday, Amen. last week, all right, all right. last year. All right. Into mm -hmm. His thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Praise is different than thanksgiving because thanksgiving is just thanking God for what He's already done. Hallelujah. Praise is the, is, 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 is the work that we can do as believers that can invite the presence of God. God inhabits the praises of His people. So when I praise God, it brings me into a realm where the presence of God is in the vicinity, not the only presence of God that is always there, but the showing up the kind of glory presence of God that we're going after. So before I get to the holies of holies, I praise him on the way because I know if I praise him enough, he's going to show up before I get there. Yes, yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to get that. We're going to get that. But can, but, 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 but can we make a confession of faith? Can we make a confession of faith? And I need y'all to give me the praise, God. I need y'all to give me the praise, God. But, but, but can we make a confession of faith? It's not a confession of faith. Say, say, say Lord. Lord. I plan on meeting you. I plan on meeting you. In the holiest of holies. The Lord is the Holy. The Lord is the Lord. But I want to be in the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you ever been there, you won't be satisfied with any lame, any lame copy or any lame thing that may make it cannot match up up to what God has for you. We will not be satisfied for anything less than the glory of God. Can you praise God right now? Yeah. Yeah. On most of our phones right now, you got the option that you can click on something. And you can copy, oh y'all better watch out, and paste. But the, but the presence of the Lord cannot and never will be able to be copied or pasted. You got to walk through this thing to get into his glory. You got to walk through this. Look around and somebody say, if you want to get there, you got to praise him and you got to pray. 
we sit in the outer court, and I promise you we're going to get a little bit more far next week. We sit in the outer court. But if you don't get anything else this week, in your prayer life, remember who died on the cross for you, your ultimate sacrifice. One. Number two, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into prayer thanking God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes, hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Three, the first. instrument, vehicle, vessel, the first vessel in the temple was the praise and altar. It was a place of repentance. It was a place of dying and death. They took their sacrifices and they placed it on And it stayed there until it burned to ashes. They took the ashes outside of the camp. They sanctified themselves. Right now in prayer, which way you need to be is Lord sanctify me. I know I got some stuff in me that ain't right. I know I got a little, I, 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 I got a little rebellion in me, amen. I got a little hatefulness in me, hallelujah. Catch me on the wrong day. I might, I might say a word, but ain't God that corrupt communication. I come out of my mouth. I need prayer. I got to put that on the altar. And it's got to stay there until it's burnt out of me. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You can't walk around here with stuff in your life and you don't ever deal with it. But the first thing you got to do in dealing with it, you got to be honest with yourself. Admit I am a mess. And God can't do nothing through me yet because I because I ain't ready. We are praying for God to open the door. We ain't ready yet. We pray for God because what will happen if we get God open up certain doors, you will get in certain doors and you will mess up those doors. Amen. Why? Because you ain't ready. I know I'm preaching right now. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. You're not ready. You are not ready for the next move of God in your life yet. You got to get to the altar. You got to die. You gotta get to the point and say, God, I ain't gonna let go of the altar till you deliver me. Yes, God. I, I'm not gonna let go of this altar until you get out of me. Everything is in me that's hindering me from where I got to go. Amen. 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 Oh, God, deliver me from myself. Deliver me, God. Deliver me. Deliver me from my mess.
And you know what? We're not going to handle this like we've handled it in the past. This, this is how we've handled it in the past. We've handled it in the past like we have handled the cold, the common cold. Because there is no cure for the common cold. Your doctors don't tell you to go to Walmart and get something over the counter that will only treat the symptoms. Y'all better get this. Y'all better get it. Treat the symptoms. And what we have done, we have only treated the symptoms of what we're doing. We've only treated the cause of what we're doing. We only treat the runny nose of what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. But there is no cure to, to the common cold. But there is a cure for sin. And it is Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And walking with him daily in prayer. Daily. So we're not going to treat the symptoms. Because the symptoms is what the thing you keep to do. But let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. You got a part of you. You're trying to soothe the rejection that you have experienced your entire life. You ain't hateful because you're just a bad person. You a nice person. But you know why you hateful? Because there's a part of you that's hurt. And because you're hurting, you want everybody else you come in contact with to hurt like you hurt. But until you deal with that hurting part, you're going to keep being hateful. Because you can only hide the high nights for so long. Oh God, I love you. Why? Why do you keep going from bed to bed in relationship to relationship? Because that's a part of you that you're trying to, to, to make feel good. And that's a part of you that tells you that the next sexual experience is going to satisfy you. That one didn't do it. So let me try this. That one didn't do it. Let me try this. And in the midst of you trying to satisfy something in you, you're hurting everybody else around you. Oh, I know I'm preaching. Y'all ain't got to say You're hurting everybody else around you. Trying to satisfy a hurt that's inside. And you know what? No, you're not going to understand it. Because we are taught only to look at the surface. Man look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the inward parts of the, of the heart of man. Yes. We're taught to judge things on how they look from the outside. But God wants to look at things deeper. I come today to tell every one of you in this place, every bit of rejection you have experienced in your childhood, today is a day of healing for you. Every, every experience of rejection you experience in relationships, today is a day of healing for you. Every one of you in here, that have given you all the people and they yet rejected you. Today is your day of healing. Every individual. Every individual. That's been rejected by your own family. Your own children, your own loved ones, today is your day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If 
you want to say with me, Bishop, I need that healing right now in my life. Stand to your feet. God, deliver us, God. 
and receive God's deliverance of the hallelujah. Receive this deliverance of the hallelujah. Hey, receive this deliverance of the hallelujah.
deliverance over everything for the glory of God. Now receive your miracles right now. Come on, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Oh, you gotta praise it right now when you pray. Oh, please. 
bless them and cover them in the blood. Open up a door with them financially and move them just for your glory and your honor and your praise. And we bless you. Father, we thank you for all the worshipers that are here in the house of God. And we ask that you bless them and cover them in the blood of their Jesus grace. Help us in the midst of this pandemic. Keep us healed, keep us whole, keep us sound. Father, right now we pray for everyone that is here today. May they be blessed and covered in the blood. And that salvation may be that strength. And you may be the Lord. Father, right now we ask that as we be this place, give us raw mercy and give us protection. As we be again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. You are the 